Control of the House is also up for grabs on Tuesday. Our latest battleground tracker poll shows Republicans favored to win a majority. But there are a lot of close races, including one in Virginia involving a member of the January 6th committee. Scott McFarland spent time traveling in that state, and now he's here with us. Scott, good morning. Good to see you. And Nate, good to see you as well. This is a race against Republican candidate Jen Kiggins and incumbent Democrat Elaine Loria. And Congresswoman Loria has something unique to talk about, what she calls her effort to prevent another attempted insurrection and attack on democracy. It's just unclear if that's going to sway enough votes. At a farmer's market in Virginia Beach, there's one thing on voters' minds. Food prices are bad. I mean, it's gone skyrocketed. Prices of everything, you know, gasoline, groceries, it's, it's, it's unreal. Like in so many congressional races, inflation and abortion rights are dominating the debate between Democratic incumbent Congresswoman Elaine Loria and Republican challenger Jen Kiggins, both U.S. Navy veterans. I think a woman should have a right to choice. We are suffering this year because of the failed policies of the Joe Biden administration. Except this is a race and a campaign season like no other. Donald Trump maliciously repeated this nonsense. Because Loria isn't a typical incumbent. She's one of nine members of Congress who became national figures leading the House January 6th Select Committee. Our hearings have shown the many ways in which President Trump tried to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Her opponent slams Loria for focusing too much on the investigation. So I think it shows that she's out of touch with this district. Being on the committee is out of touch. So focusing on January 6th, making that a priority and using her celebrity uh, on that committee to do things like fundraise. And I just think it's out of touch with what the voters of the second district are really caring about right now. Loria strikes back, criticizing Kiggins for questioning Virginia's 2020 election results. The state president Biden won by 10 points. Is there any political peril to being a face of the January 6th committee in one of these toss-up, evenly split districts? Honestly, I don't care. Um, the truth about it is, is that the work that the committee is doing is so important. Um, being on the right side of history, getting to the facts. But three of the other nine members of this panel are going to be gone at the end of the year. Two are retiring. Congresswoman Liz Cheney, as you recall, lost her primary in Wyoming. This was a wedge issue, her service on the committee. And then last night in Michigan, Liz Cheney, who says she's going to defeat the election deniers, endorses a Democrat in yes, Michigan. Yes, It was a little jarring to see that picture, but she really is standing up for what she believes in. But it's interesting when you talk to voters, intent, emotions are so intense on both sides. Everybody feels very strongly about this election. There we are in Virginia Beach, where they have strong thoughts, as you say, but they bring up inflation. They yeah. bring up the grocery prices. Of they course. bring up the gas prices. I mentioned the January 6th committee. They're all familiar with it. Yeah. But that's not top of mind for them. One, not top of one mind. thing affects you today, the other thing may affect you down the line. Right. It's immediate versus long term. Hey. Scott, it's always good to have you in the studio. Thank you. And a reminder the midterms are less than one week away, and we'll have full coverage for you here on CBS starting at 8 p.m. Eastern on November 8th.